Do you ever feel like modern day life just feels like absolute chaos? Well, a few months ago, I was just drowning in digital clutter. I had notes scattered across about four different apps. I had files that I couldn't find and my task manager was bursting at the seams. I'd tried every productivity system under the sun, but they all had the same problem. I spent more time setting them up than I did actually using them. But I was about ready to give up until I finally found something that cut through the noise. And today I'm gonna to show you what it is, how I use it, plus a super simple method that will help you declutter your digital life. Yeah, I was watching this program the other day called Sort Your Life Out. And the concept is that the presenters attempt to empty a home of all physical belongings. Then they lay them out in this massive warehouse and then the owners have to sort through everything to decide what they want to keep. And it got me thinking, what if we were to do the same thing with all of our digital stuff, like photos, documents, emails, even just one person's digital stuff all laid out like that? How big? would the warehouse need to be? What's the solution? Well, just lately, I've been looking into the idea of digital minimalism and hear me out here. It's not as woo woo as it sounds. It's just about being really brutal with how and where we keep all our digital stuff. Which then begs the question, how on earth do you go about organizing thousands of digital things in a minimalist way? Well, I started by trying the system that was developed by Tiago Forte, which he calls PARA. And this stands for Projects, Areas, Resources, Archive. And the general idea is that you just chuck everything into one of those boxes and then you keep on sorting. And whilst I understand that a lot of people like this method, I do think it is quite flawed and it really only appeals to people who can easily categorize their stuff into projects. Like Tiago, I also advocated for Notion for years, but over time I just grew tired of how bloated and how slow it was to use. So I developed my own little methodology, which you can feel free to borrow or steal. I'm gonna be running a deeper dive live stream on this relatively soon. So if you're interested, just make sure you're subscribed and you'll be able to find out more. The cool thing about this is that you can apply it to pretty much any tool you're already using, whether it's something that's pre-installed on your device or a more advanced piece of software that you maybe pay to use. Now, I happen to be using Craft, which for me is the current undisputed king of tools for organizing things. And I will explain why as we go along. I've completely moved all of my second brain away from Notion and I've been using Craft for about a year now. And so I reached out to them to let them know I was planning on making this and they kindly agreed to sponsor it and also share a very very special offer with my viewers. More on that a bit later on. One of the things that immediately drew me into craft is that it is so clean and simple. And unlike Notion, there's a very low learning curve to get started, even though there are lots of pro features and cool gestures hidden under the hood if you do want that kind of thing. And unlike something like Notion, it doesn't force you to cram everything into this database -y, web page -y structure. Although, side note, if you do like databases, they do exist too. Craft call these collections. Now, the simple idea is that you have a space and that space can contain documents, folders, or templates. And documents can store anything from simple written notes to an uploaded file, to a table, a database, images, pretty much anything can live in them. Even handwritten notes, if you happen to be using this on an iPad, so there's no need for a separate note-taking app anymore. I can just keep all of my scribbles here and now everything lives in one easy place. See, minimalism, minimalism, minimalism. If you just wanna sit and write completely free of distractions, this is a really good place to do that. I just hit enable focus mode and watch this, everything else disappears, I love it. And if you wanna make something that looks cool as well as clean, you can just hit this styles menu on any document and take your pick from all these templates or make your own. And this in turn influences the way the whole app behaves and looks. It's an absolutely gorgeous interface and I'm just not surprised that they've been nominated for a ton of awards lately. And then if you also want the opportunity to add tasks, there is a task manager built in. In fact, they've just recently added repeatable tasks. Plus there's a calendar system which links to all your other calendar. So if you're looking for a single system that covers all your type notes, handwritten stuff, tasks, and a calendar, you can just live in this app and it's got you 
fully covered. And I'm gonna show you pieces of my setup as we go, but let me just start here with a blank space and I'll show you how I would set this up from scratch using my own productivity system. We're gonna start with the F, of fast and this stands for files the idea here is that i put anything that is active work or content that i'm working on right now so that could be anything from a shopping list or a meal planner for the week through to active work documents presentation slides or a set of proposals that i need to finish writing up so if i'm using this right now it's a file i just put it here and then get on with it. And next we have A for action. So anything that I need to act on lives here. So tasks, decisions, or work that I'm maybe not on with yet, but I will need to do soon. So in Tiago Forte's model, he defines projects as being time bound and areas as ongoing responsibilities, which I found that kind of confusing. With my system, actions covers both. So anything that you need to act on lives here, whether it's a short-term project or a recurring task. Now, obviously in craft, I can add a task here and it appears in this task menu, whatever device I'm using. And then I can always click through to see the full context for that task if I ever need to, without needing to clutter up a dedicated task manager with loads of explanation. And that is another example of minimalism. I think this is really cool because I can use this action space to take both a long-term and a short-term view of what's going on. I can see all my actions for the coming week, month, and even the year ahead. It's pretty cool, right? Because I'm a nerd, I've used Craft's card system here to create this series of boxes within which they've all my actions for different months, separated out into years to give me both a micro and a macro view all in one space. Next up we have S, which is for storage. So this is effectively my digital attic. So templates, past proposals that I've written, or my reading notes from books, coaching session notes, useful links, even kind of half-baked YouTube ideas that I might come back to one day. That is all here. I also use this as the digital equivalent of my kitchen drawer. So it stores all my bank statements, tax documents, receipts, and instruction manuals in. So I don't need to keep those things in hard copy format anymore. Anything that's a reference material or any kind of important document that I will need lives here and I can quickly access it using the search function. So the para equivalent is actually called resources, but the repositioning of this as storage within my framework to me just makes this feel a bit lighter. The key thing here is that this is the stuff that I intentionally decide to keep. It's not a huge dumping ground for things that are gonna bloat up my system and then trip me up in the future. And then there's T, which is triage. Now you could just call this trash and say, this is about everything that needs to be archived and eventually deleted. But for me, triage is about decluttering by design. So this probably should come first, but you know, TFAS isn't a proper word. But triage is where everything goes in my craft setup before I decide what to do with it. So I get a new document from a client that needs reviewing, triage. Random inspiration at 2 a.m., triage. Screenshot that I decide I wanna keep, yeah. Straight into triage. So once or twice a week, I just clean this section out and sort things through. Some things get moved to files, some to actions, and most of them get deleted. For me, this is the magic part. Triage is how I stop my craft setup from turning into a massive mess like I had with Notion. And for me, all it takes is about 15 minutes a week to prune it and stop it becoming overgrown. The rest of the time I can dedicate to actually getting stuff done in the other sections. So just to recap on the system again, there's files, this should be the smallest area, what I'm using or I need in the very immediate future. There's actions, which is what I need to do right now or in the medium to distant future. There's storage, which is what I need to keep. And then there's triage, which is what I haven't figured out just yet. Four folders, that's it. It's an easy system that you can apply in about 10 minutes. It's designed for people who are just done with bloated dashboards and database chaos. And I'd encourage you to try it out using Craft. I think you'll be shocked at how much lighter everything feels once you get started. A couple of other cool things I wanted to share about Craft. It, of course, has got AI built in, but it's included in the cost, unlike Notion. Plus, you can also name which AI framework you want to use, whether it's OpenAI's latest models or even something that runs locally on your device, like DeepSeek. And of course, you can use it to help you rewrite documents, repurpose your content, or 
translate your work or anything else that you normally use AI for. Now you can try Craft out for free and there is a plus model, which is a monthly subscription. Now, like I said, at the start of this video, the lovely people at Craft have put together a massive 40% reoccurring discount code. If you use my link in the description or this code over here, that's 40% off for life. It's probably one of the best deals I've ever run on this channel. And I'm really grateful that I got to make this one happen for a product that I practically live in every day. Now, if you're already using Craft and you're loving it, just let me know your favorite feature down in the comments. I know by the time this video comes out, they'll have probably released a bunch more things that you can do, and it'd be really cool to hear how you've been using it. Now, if you're interested to know more about some other lesser known apps that I use in my Mac setup, just check out this video over here for a bit of inspiration. See you next time.